babies are weird. Uh, they have a whole suite of qualities not possessed by adult humans, and we wondered why this should be. So there's a simple explanation we've come to, which is that early humans catapulted their infants over a nearby mountain to reach the next village over. And so it was adaptive for the babies to become as uh, aerodynamic as possible to reach the most genetically distinct population. <laughs> this simple theory has vast explanatory power, uh, and I want to start you off with the physics of um, flying infants. So we started thinking about this, and our first model was uh, airborne babies as tumbling objects. Um, so in, in this case, it's, it's somewhat explanatory, because if you're a tumbling object, the best shape sh uh, to be is a sphere. And we note that humans, with some exceptions, tend to become less spherical over their lives. <laughs> uh, but then we hit upon a second model. Uh, so this is an airfoil. Uh, the, the wing of an airplane, um, and this is the shape of an infant. Uh, <clears throat> now, um, you, you will note that the, the large head of the baby, but the relatively tapered body of the baby, uh, results in a low pressure zone above the baby and a high pressure zone below. Um, so this creates some lift, but uh, one, one problem that occurred to us is the baby has this large bottom, um, which is not aerodynamic at all. Uh, and we thought, why should this be? Well, you'll note that if the baby did not have the large bottom, the center of mass is in the head. And so the lift is over here, um, but the center of mass is in the head. And so you're back to a tumbling object at that point. Um, <laughs> And in this configuration, the baby is very unstable. Uh, in fact, it's a particularly bad tumbling object because the, the axis is on the head. Um, but if you add, as evolution has done, this bottom, it shifts the center of mass to the exact point um, at which it needs to be to catch the lift. Uh, and so that'll keep the baby self-balancing. Uh, my, uh, next, we considered the fact that babies are largely hairless. Most babies have little to no body hair. Uh, and this is true even in populations that have long been in cold areas where it would have been useful. Uh, so we propose that the lack of hair is, is in order to limit air drag while in transit. Um, <clears throat> however, it's been noted, you'll see the baby has a little head hair. And we wondered why that should be. Um, and I don't want to get too technical here, but we propose <laughs> We, we, we propose that the baby's head acts like the dimples on a golf ball. Uh, um, and so by, by doing so, it, it limits the laminar flow, which results in this narrower wake here. Uh, so you get less air drag on the baby. Uh, and, and, and in addition, then, the rest of the baby is smooth because there are no major obstructions. Um, and this is nice because it explains uh, why uh, uh, we're attracted to people with smooth skin. Um, the, we, we, in an evolutionary sense, we say, oh, this person will produce a more aerodynamic offspring for me. <laughs> and it may even explain why we are attracted to people who are hairless below the head would have lots of hair above. Um, and, and it also explains why babies have these small noses, ears, anything that would get uh, in the way of their two-dimensional cross-sectional wind-facing area. Um, an additional thing, uh, I don't know how many of you are parents, but you probably noticed that babies have this quality such that if you blow air on the baby's face, it will calm down, close its mouth, and relax. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, we know from Galilean relativity <laughs> that pushing air past the baby, 
is the same as the baby being pushed past air. Um, so we propose that this is uh, an evolutionarily honed reflex the baby has to the flow of air past its face. It will remain calm and aerodynamic as it flies. Um, and in addition, it'll keep its mouth closed uh, so it won't get an eddy current uh, going. Um, and, and also, it, it may be the case that by uh, limiting the air intake, you also decrease the two-dimensional wind-facing area of the baby. Um, and this also explains why babies like being tossed up and down. Um, it explains why babies like it when you grab an arm and a leg and spin them around, because... <laughs> the, the, the baby, uh, as it spins, is in an evolutionary sense thinking, ah, this will allow me to uh, mate subsequently with a more genetically distinct partner. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so now we, we've gone over some morphology. I want to get a little more into behavior. Um, why is it that babies are so dumb? <laughs> now, so a, baby, a baby cow is not much dumber than an adult cow. Uh, but a baby human is, uh, with some exceptions, much dumber than an adult human. <laughs> And so we wondered why uh, this difference. Uh, so our proposal is that a smart baby would not get into a catapult. Um, so therefore, smart babies have tended to suffer a fitness cost from inbreeding with a local population. Um, whereas dumb babies have gone very far. Uh, in addition, uh, it's been noted that Neanderthals had much, uh, not much larger, but larger craniums than Homo sapiens, and yet they remained regional and eventually died out while Homo sapiens flourished. It may be that their babies were too smart to get into the catapult. Um, Finally, once, once the baby lands, it emits a high-pitched noise, uh, which, which travels through the air, uh, greater distance, higher fidelity. Um, and uh, in addition, once, the, uh, once humans find it, we note that babies are found to be cute by all human populations, regardless of blood relation or lineage. And so this is sort of a, a parasitic strategy by the baby. Uh, <laughs> To, to get its genetics into a genetically distinct population. Um, I want to close with some historical evidence. Um, so since this theory involves early humans, it's very hard to get fossil evidence. Uh, but we hypothesize uh, that some primitive macro structures, uh, very large structures, uh, may have been built to keep children amused and aerodynamic in flight. Um, <laughs> This is uh, the Nazca Lines, uh, Colossus of Rhodes, and of course the Sphinx. Uh, now these structures are a bit too recent to have had a profound evolutionary effect, but we suppose that this is just uh, culture reflecting the history of evolution, but that the impulse to build large, interesting pictures that could be seen from the sky um, <laughs> is a, a genetic legacy from times when uh, infantipulting was a bit more common. Uh, uh, so you see a uh, great explanatory power of this theory. Uh, if you have any lingering doubts about it, we encourage you to look at your adult bodies and note that without exception, every single post-puberty characteristic you have would serve uh, to create air drag while in flight. Uh, and in closing, I want to say thank you to Jacob and Joe uh, from the Technically Speaking podcast who had a very good knowledge of baby dynamics. Thank <laughs> you.